Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and today I want to talk about nav radios, the Bohr ground stations and how they work together. Most airplanes today have two COM and nav radios. Some have a standby frequency where you can enter the frequency and then hit the flip button to switch over to the active frequency and this can be very helpful. Now there are two parts to the nav radio system in the airplane. The radio itself and then the VOR indicator where you select a radio a course to fly. So what is a VOR? A VOR is somewhat like a radio station and like in your car you tune your radio to that station by dialing in a frequency. But it's much more complicated. The VOR has a second very tight signal that rotates around the floor kind of like a lighthouse beacon and this second signal rotates 360 degrees 30 times a second and this second signal makes it possible for the nav radio in the airplane to calculate a precise course from or to the VOR and by using a rotating compass card on the VOR indicator we can select a course to fly so picture this as the VOR and this is that one signal coming out that rotates and this little fella is going around and round and round the VOR 30 times a second. So where do you find VORs and how do you use them? Well a great website is skyvector.com and here you will find sectional charts. This is a world VFR chart. It also has a world low view and these circles here and here and here these are all VORs and you can see the names you can also right click on them and it'll give you the information you can actually click on plan and it'll add that to a flight plan then you can select another VOR and add that to your plan and you can create a flight plan this way and of course you can do the same thing in the world VFR view. To see your plan you just click on the flight plan and it shows you uh, your waypoints and then you can move these around if you want um, and you can also pick this line here and you'll get that cross and you can move it to other locations. I did another video on planning a flight with skyvector.com with board of war flight plan so you can check that out and learn how to do that. If you don't want to deal with that, then X-Plane has a really pretty good map. And I've programmed a key actually on my keyboard to pop that map up. And it has VORs too. You have a selection over here of what you can display. And you have VORs. And so here are VORs also. And you can see that it gives you the frequency. And if you scroll out, you can find other boards. The one thing I am a little disappointed in here is you can only go so far in this map and then you're out of range. So if you're trying to do a flight plan you can only go a hundred and some miles, 80 miles it looks like on this map. So it'd be a little harder to plan a flight however you do click on it and up here it'll tell you uh, the name of the VOR. This is a VORTAC and the frequency. So if you just want to use X-Plane, this is a very nice way just to mess around with the VORs also. One more thing that you'll come across when selecting VORs is they have different names. Here we have the Santa Rosa VOR DME. If we click over here, we have the Sacramento VORTAC. And if we go up here, we have just the Travis VOR. So what is a VOR DME. Well that is just a VOR with distant measuring equipment. And the VOR TAC is a tactical air navigation system. This is used by the military and it's a DME system they use. And I do not believe that's simulated in the simulators. So when you come across those names that's what they are. You have a VOR, a VOR with DME, and then you have the Vortac, which has the military radio frequency for DME. 
Before we get into the air and actually use the nav radios, let's go over the functions. First of all, this is the nav radio right here. Nav 1 and down here we have nav 2. So to change the frequencies here and the standby, we use the large knob and turn it to the right to increase and to the left to decrease. For the decimal numbers, we use the smaller knob. And that's how we select the frequencies. Then we click on the flip-flop button here to make that the active frequency. And it sets the act active frequency back to the standby mode. The VOR indicator has an arrow up here on the top, smaller arrow down here at the bottom, indicating the course we want to fly and its reciprocal. The arrow here inside the VOR indicator is the to from arrow. And if you're flying to the VOR, then this little pyramid will be pointing towards the two. If we were using the VOR to fly from, then this arrow would indicate from. The VOR indicator also has a rotating compass card right here that is rotated by the OBS knob or Omni Bearing Select. So we are selecting a bearing that we want to head out on. So let's get up in the air and start using our nav radios. Give you a different look. So I've loaded the DC4 that I downloaded from free from xplane.org. This beauty was built by Pedro and modified by Bill, who goes by B squared 18 at the org. I really like flying this airplane because in 1963 I flew one on one of these Mats airliners from California to Hawaii to Wake and then finally to Guam. About a 36 hour flight. I think it was 8 hours to Hawaii, 12 hours to Wake and then 12 hours to Guam with some layovers in between. Wow, what a flight. And Bill did a great job on the livery and that's what got me interested. So if you like this airplane, search the org for C-54 MATS Transport version 9.7 at the xplane.org. So let's go and look at the map. And here we have our Sausalito Vortac. Remember that is a VOR with a military DME. And you can see us right here and we want to go to Sausalito. Okay, let's go back. We want to turn our radio to 116.2. And so we've already got our radio here tuned. We use the big and little knobs here to get it. We click over to 116.2. We're on the NAV1 radio. And you can see here now on our VOIR indicator that we have a line going up and down right here. And this is a CDI needle, or course deviation indicator. And so we are going to take the OBS, the Omni Bearing Selector knob, and we are going to rotate that until CDI needle gets right to the center. And that will show us the course we need to fly. So here it comes. And this is telling us that we need to fly a course of 330. And we are on a heading of 275. And all we have to do now to fly to that is, well, let's center it up again. And now we are just going to select Autopilot, Nav 1, and then we're going to click on the Lock button, LOC, for Localizer. And you'll notice the airplane immediately starts to turn, and the Autopilot has taken over. And we are going to end up flying directly to uh, the Sausalito Vor. So it's really that simple. That's all you have to do. Select your VOR and select the course you want to go. Now if you're just flying straight to the VOR, that's pretty good. I suggest you watch my uh, video on VOR to VOR flight planning with Sky Vector. That'll show you how to use the to and from feature here. Uh, but just to give you one more thing here. Let's just say we're fogged in and we're flying it. Uh, IFR rules and you can't see where you're going but you're using your radios and you want to know when you are going to cross let's just say 
uh, the San Francisco airport or when are we going to be parallel with the San Francisco airport? So we would get our sectional chart out, um, but let's just use um, our map here to do that. And we can see that the San Francisco VOR is right here. And it looks like a heading of 240 as we're coming towards Sausalito will let us know when we are parallel with the airport. So this is San Francisco VOR DME. We're going to tune our NAV2 radio to 115.8. So let's get back in the airplane. And now we're going to tune our NAV2 radio. So we're going to select we're going to select NAV2 and go 115.8 and switch it over to active. And now we are going to select the course of 240. So let's just rotate our knob here until we get to 240. So now we have our NAV2 radio set for 240 and our CDI needle is right here. Now what will happen as the closer we get to that this needle will come over and when it is centered then we will be directly parallel from the San Francisco airport. So I'm going to pause this and sneak forward a bit and we'll pick this up in just a second. Alright, you can see we're coming up rather quickly on that because we're going to, this is a very narrow beam. Let's pause, look at the map. Got to center the map here. And as you can see, we are right on the 240 radial off of San Francisco. So now we know exactly where we are. The other thing you'll notice is we did not switch from the NAV1 radio to the NAV2. We didn't want to navigate with that. We just used that as an indicator uh, to help us locate ourselves. And that's the other thing you can do with your NAV radios is, is you can triangulate your locations if you were lost. So that's all I have time for on this little video on how to use uh, your NAV radios. And this is a different look. I wanted you to know that it, almost all airplanes have NAV radios and they don't all look the same. And back to this airplane, this is pretty cool. Let's just take a look outside here. This is a Mats airline, a DC-4 um, that I actually flew on when I went to Guam in 1963. And it's really quite a cool airplane to fly. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of this. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment, that would be great. And thank you again so much for watching, and God bless.